Mic check, one, two, one, two. YouTube, what's happening? It's your player partner, Von Keith, the artist, you know, coming in all the way live. And I'm coming to you with a whole nother brand new video. I ain't even put this on Instagram yet. This is officially a YouTube video, man. I'm really starting this thing off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start, you know, blowing out the taper with my Austin speed lines on my client. Now, this is a brand new client. I've never did this hair before. So, please bear with me, you know. I haven't learned this head or anything. <laughs> now, but now I'm taking my uh, my Andy C outliners. They are zero gap. They are, you know what I'm saying, modified all that with the gold blade. Shout out to my boy Hair Taylor for getting that to me. And he also made my speed lines with the gold blade with the ceramic blade at the bottom of it, man. If you don't have a ceramic blade on the bottom of any clipper of yours, man, you kind of slipping in the barber game right now. You need to get you a ceramic blade on at least one pair of your clippers to see how it's going. But now, you know, I'm just taking up the fade halfway on the neck, just getting all that hair. Now, sometimes, you know, with coarse hair, it may go up, it may go side to side. You never know, man. So you really got to take your time when you're really starting off these fades. Don't try to rush through it and have these, you know what I'm saying, these streaks of hair going through your fade because then you're going to have a lot of cleanup work to do. You don't want all that. Just knock it out right then and there. Now, we're just taking my Andy's T outliners once again getting that good ball line. I don't never press to make my ball line. I always gradually just shoot, you know, shoot up because it makes it easier to knock out that, you know, that bottom line, man. It really does. Just take it from me. That's how my process goes. Now we're just doing the other side. Hey, bam, bam, bam. Look at that tapers coming out smooth. I always try to start off my tapers with a C looking shape, especially my blowout fades. If my client say he wants it blown out, I always try to start it off with a C because in the end result, it's gonna, you know, the fade is gonna still be dark on the edge on the, of the tape line. And also it's gonna gradually go up into the darkness of the hair, especially on the waiver, man. Like if the waiver asks for this, I, I gotta go off. I got a ball out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we just balling that thing on out once again, speeding that thing on up. Now, this is my one and a half wall guard. Always ask a waiver, how low does he want his hair cut? Don't just be like, hey, man, shoot, uh, just go into it, you know what I'm saying? Or try to consult with them because sometimes you don't know, you don't know what people have been going through with their hair. Sometimes, you know, uh, you don't know if a dude been waiting a whole two months. You don't know if a dude been waiting a whole three months because somebody didn't mess his hair up. He's trying to get his, his pattern back or whatever. But anyway, um, try to follow the uh, the pattern of the hair as well. I always start from where the hair starts growing at, and I just follow the, the waver's pattern and everything. Um, I make sure I take my time as well, man, because cutting curly hair can be difficult. Sometimes I, I'll cut through the hair one time, comb the hair once again, and then go back over and cut through it again. Because like I said, you don't want too much cleanup work, especially towards the end when you see, you know, when I'm trimming the top of the hair and all that. Um, another thing to help barbers out, you can see my hand is on the forehead. It's just, you know, just to eliminate getting hair all in your client's eyes and to keep, you know, different techniques of professionalism. You know, just cut the hair cut the hair down first keep your hand up there on the forehead just to make like a little cuff and then to shoot the hair away just to you know show the client that you do care <laughs> that you know he is seeing the process or whatever once again take your time don't rush this is the this is the fun part cutting through the hair honestly but I, I can't lie I do love fading as well because that makes my haircuts pop. Now we're starting off the back of the head, fading the thing on out. Bop, 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 bop. I had to speed it up for you a little bit. I can't make the video all long and drawing out and boring for you. You feel me? <laughs> Come on, man. But you know, now we're starting off with my wall guards open. You know, I'm flicking that lever up a little bit, flicking that lever up a little bit. Gradually as I go, you know, as I go. Up and up and up and up, <laughs> climbing up the ladder. You feel me? But nah, man. Um, work that fade. You know, take your time. Especially like I had to learn this clipper because I was a huge Masters fan. But learning my wall seniors, it really was a challenge at first. It took. I ain't gonna lie. It took me about a good mm, 
year and a half, maybe two years, just to master this quickly by itself. You know, because I, I mastered the master, the Andy's Masters after three years, you know. But um, as you can see, I have an Andy's Master Guard on my wall, seniors. Now, the way to do this is by taking the nano magnetic guards, not the double magnetic guards of the Andes, the nano magnetic guards. If you, in the nano magnetic guards is just the one magnetic um, magnetic circle on the guards, and you can easily just place it on there because it's not affecting, uh, it's, it comes in, I can't explain it, man, it just comes in different measurements. I know that for sure, but it still cuts the same, it still gets the job done, in my opinion. Um, I like using the Andes guards though because I can't say they're more durable. They just they get the job done, man. They cut through the hair a lot, a lot better sometimes, you know. But it really does depend on the texture of the hair because now you see I'm using my blending guard, and to me, using my my wall blending guard is just like using my Andes Masters open. You know what I'm saying? But the blending guard also makes that it it really makes your fades pop, man. I'm starting to realize it really makes my fades pop, especially when I close that thing all the way up. It gives it that you know it eliminates that that weight line that you really don't want there. Now I'm just going up a little bit more to the occipital bone in that area, you know what I'm saying? But I'm using my one and a half guard so I'm not just really, you know, cutting too much hair because, you know, I want my fade to be gradual. That's what a fade is. It's something that's gradually going up, you know what I'm saying? So we want to keep that thing looking smooth and cutting the hair down, cutting the hair down as I fade up as well because you don't want to cut too much hair off. And I'm also using a, you know, using that comb technique. I don't, I don't really use my brush too much unless I'm on, you know, if I'm, if I'm fading out low hair. But if I'm, you know, if I'm on like some hair, and I'm really, you know, in the process of fading a lot of hair out, shoot, take the comb, you know, <laughs> use that thing. You know, I had to pull them out. You know, I had to pull them out. Oops. Those are my babies, man. Like, they really get the job done. Especially like when I'm when I'm trying to fiddle fat and I'm trying to finesse a fade. If I know, hey, this is the type of hair that's really you know giving me a hard time. Let's pull out the masters with the one guard. Start it off, you know. <laughs> now you saw I then close it on up, getting that weight line out. It's coming out smoothly, and as you can see, his hair is kind of it kind of curves to the left of his head so you know i'm just going with the pattern of his hair i'm not trying to just fade up you know i'm going with the pattern to keep the fade gradual and so i'm not putting any gaps in his head or anything because that's the last thing you want i promise you man because i mean people don't realize but when you when the barber gives the client the mirror to look at they be like yeah can you see the back sometimes they can see it sometimes they can't they just say yeah but hey they go home and look at it now i'm putting some enhanced holding spray on the back on the, his uh neck area just to give him that you know just to give him that sharp crispy line when they can get back to it i like for it to air dry rather than blow dry most of the time because i don't know the air dry just makes that it makes the skin a lot more stickier like, well not stickier but a lot more you know, a lot more dry, a lot more crisp. So when I, my clippers test the thing, bam, it just hit it. As you can see, we're taking the wall guard, blending on, blending out the bottom of the blowout fade. I'm flicking my lever, my flicking my lever right now. You know, I'm finessing it. You know, it's kind of bright, so you really can't see it too much. But if you could pay attention really closely, you can kind of see. You know, I'm not. I'm just taking my time with it, man. I'm really just finessing my fade. Work your fades. Don't. Just try to piece them together, whatever you want to say, man. Really work them, like put some, put some wrist work into it. I promise you, it'll pay off. Now, since I cut the hair down with the one and a half guard, you know, I like for my edge ups to be very crispy. And the secret to my edge ups being crispy is by taking, you know, a one guard or something. Like, let's say if I take a one and a half guard, cut the hair down, I'll take the Andy's one guard and go ahead and just cut the, you know, the front of the hair down to get that crispy line up. Look at them things hitting like but pop pop pop. Man, shout out to my man Clipper Grinder, man. That's another it's he's another dope um another dope clipper sharpener in the game as well. Hair Taylor and Clipper Grinder, man, like <laughs> them dudes, they up there, they neck and neck, like right? they really getting they really making me look good. They getting they getting the job done. They making my job a lot easier. I don't have to keep, you know, finessing lines or whatever you want to say. 
it's just a, you know, it's just a, a light tap and go, light tap and go. You know, all you need is a little bit of spritz, make the hair, you know, a little hard, and bam, light tap and go, light tap and go. Don't, don't do too much, you know, you don't want to do too much, because you're already doing, you know, as a barber, your goal is to at least do over 10 heads a day. Like me, I charge $40 for a cut. So if I'm charging forty dollars for a cut, I'm cutting ten heads a day. You do the math. You know what I'm saying? Like let's let's get this money. But let's get this money the easy way. You don't want to work too hard because barbering is a full workout. That's what people don't understand. Like you know, my clients are looking at me like, man, you're tired or whatever. Like, yeah, it is a tiring job. But I'm still you know just lining up the outside. So you know just lining up the outside, doing the pre lineup, just so. I can know where I want my fade to start because it just helps me out when I'm doing this blowout phase in particular. You know, like it lets me know, hey, know where his line is going to be. It, it helps me prepare for the razor line as well, you know, as far as putting razor cream in. But when I start my fade, that's where, you know, I can really go into detail with my fades a lot more because I'm not guessing where the line is going to be while I'm fading the hair out. It's all, the line is already there. I know where I want the fade to be. That's all I need to know. Always keep it simple, ladies and gentlemen. You always want to keep it simple and simple. You don't want to make the job too, too hard. So, and this also eliminates time when you give your client a pre lineup because, you know, when, you, when you're when you back to back, you know, when you're booked up throughout the day, you don't have time to be, you know, trying to second guess yourself or trying to, you know, finesse stuff throughout the day. No, let's get this thing done. Let's get it out the way. Let's get it over with. Now I had to speed up, you know, this process on the side, on the fade, on his side, because my camera, my camera did blur out a little bit. I'm sorry about that, but I did show you a little bit of technique. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm basically using my one guards, my zero guards, my one and a half wall guard. You know, um, right here, I, I always consult my clients, make sure I ask them, hey, <laughs> what you want your mustache looking like? Some people like it, you know, slim and skinny. Some people want to keep it thick. A lot of barbers lose clients off of not asking them, how do you want your mustache, bro? <laughs> I promise you. But just, just a lot of barbers don't ask what clients want in a particular period, especially a new client. Like I said, this is a brand new client. This man has never, you know, sat in my chair before. Now I'm taking my exotic shave gel. Exotics is dope, man. I promise you, man. Y'all have to get some of this stuff. Y'all have to try it out. Like, I love the smell of the product. I love how... It makes it makes my razor blades easier to glide on the skin, man. Like I like to use the hot towel method as well, but sometimes like I really like to use the hot towel after I raise my fine just to you know, go ahead and wipe all this the razor gel off and clean and get that skin nice and dry so it can get prepared for that last line up for the you know, that line up to make extra crispy. But with this exotic shave gel, man, it just it just glides like funny. Like look at look how it's going just and a lot of times, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, put any other shave gels out there like that bad. There's a lot of great shave gels on the market. But, you know, I was just kind of having problems with kind of nicking people sometimes, you know. And don't get me wrong, I, I had to get up on my razor skill as well. So I'm not gonna put all the blame on the shave gel or whatever. But it just seems like all of a sudden when I started using exotics, shh, I have not nicked too many people at all. I'm just saying. So this is a great product, man. Please check it out. Um, now you know I'm on the bottom of my clients' neck. Uh, a lot of clients are very frantic about barbers getting at the bottom of their neck because most of the time the clippers are sharp. Keep a good pair of clippers that are just set. You know, that are not set to be zero gap sometimes. You know, sometimes you just want a regular pair of clippers that's just straight out the box, you know, that you can just clean up with. Because you want your client to trust you, especially if he's new. And you don't want to be over here, you know, attacking the neck, leaving scrapes and marks. And, man, you can see I'm, I'm just getting in that beard. I always, but I don't like to line up my beard, especially like if my client, he told me he's trying to start, a, you know, he's really trying to grow his beard out. So I'm not going to be over here trying to put a hard press of clippers on his skin because it already seems like his skin might not be used to it. It looks like he's just starting out trying to grow a beard. So, you know, I always try to use that razor back because it also gives off a good, sharp, crispy line anyway. And then after I wipe off the razor, uh, the razor, the shave gel, 
whatever you call it. I go back, hit it with the razor again. It's not irritating the skin at all. Man. I learned that from my boy Smash, man. You don't never want to irritate the skin. Man, even if you can line up the skin, like, you can line up the skin with the razor first. That would be good. Um, so right here, I'm just hitting it with the hot towel method, like I said. Put a little bit of essential oil on his nose to wake up, you know, give him that fresh, fresh, freshy smell, smell you know, <laughs> that good fresh breath of air, you want to call it. Um, take my massager, massage the head, man. A lot of people around in my area that work in factories, they do a lot of really hard manual work, so I always just try to give back to my clients, man, give them a compliment with hot towel and a nice, good massage, man. They really enjoy this type of stuff. I really promise you, like, I have people that come every week just for that, just for that particular service. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, here goes Von Keith's polishing method. Check it out, check it out. Now, this right here is the foam wrap right here, okay? Now, barbers are starting to use this, John. I mean, what? Well, I don't say John, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, content. Barbers are starting to use this type of product a lot in the industry. I'm loving it. I mean, I've seen a couple, you know, I've seen, I got influenced by seeing other barber music. So it's like, man, use it, bro. <laughs> if you see a good barber using it, you use it as well. It's working for them, it'll work for you. Right there was my tier one barber butter. Uh, it's going to be hitting the shelves really soon. I'm telling you, that thing is about to take over. Especially for waivers, man, because you don't have to use grease. You really don't, man. Like, shea butter gets the job done, I promise you. And it's actually a lot more healthier for your skin. It doesn't end your hair. It doesn't cook your hair up at all. Coming soon, man. Tier one barber, bro. I was just shaping the hair up, cleaning it up. Now, remember in the beginning when I told you, when you take the time and you cut through the hair, when you're cleaning up the hair, it's not going to take as much time because all the extra excess hair is gone. I said extra excess. Anyway, you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, the cleanup process isn't going to be as much. Now, it doesn't look like I'm cleaning up anything because it looks so sharp from the distance of the camera, but I promise you, there's a lot of stick the hair sticking up that I can see with my naked eye. Well, I can say my barber eye as well. But, you know, let look at my client on his phone. Look at him on his phone. Already at Hollywood. He already, he already know he got a fresh cut. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, man, don't make the cleanup process too long. Right here, I'm using my magic pencil that I like type deal. I just, you know, I like to use the magic pencil because it gives that extra crispiness, especially when I'm taking pictures, man, or when I'm doing videos. I'm not about to sell myself short. You ain't about to see me out here just doing any kind of regular old cuts. Regular cuts ain't winning anymore. Bro. Just like how they say, y'all light skin dudes ain't a style no more. <laughs> you know, regular cuts just ain't winning like that no more. People just don't, like some people just are blessed with a good, with good hair to where a regular cuts looks immaculate on you. Not everybody though. And that's 80% of people. Now right here I'm putting on my hair fibers and stuff, man. I had to speed this up because the camera angle was horrible. Now this is the slow down process. I'm using some Paul Mitchell hose spray. Um, I'm using a card because you know I did raise my client, so I don't want his skin to burn. Right here, this type of hair fiber is enhanced hair fibers. I'm using enhanced hair fibers made by my man Chuka Torres. Uh, you can get that off of the richbarber.com. Once again, you can get that off of the richbarber.com. They have really good product. Man. Um, after I, I lay the foundation of the, uh, the whole spray, of course, I put the, um, I put, these are my thoughts, man. I put the uh, hair fibers on there, and then I put another coat of whole spray, and then I blow dry. And as you can see earlier, it kind of did like I put the whole hair fibers on there. Sometimes they happen, especially when you hold the hair fiber and I'm going to hang it. But that's why I take my comb, and I just comb through the hair, you know what I'm saying? And I blow dry it as well because I'm letting the hair fibers stick at the same time. I'm just cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up, you know, sweeping that thing on up, you know, you know, call it, with my Andy's T outliners with the gold blade. Now they kind of wasn't getting the job all the way done like I wanted, but like extra, 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 extra crispy line, you feel me? So what, I'm, what I did, I went ahead and took my blades, but I cut the grinder, and I just went ahead and, you know, mopped that thing on up. Because this is what I want. I want the extra sparkly clean tape line. Now you can see I got my corners back how I want it. 
you know, we're, it's coming, it's gonna come through, we're not gonna do too much, we're gonna just keep it as dry as possible, we're gonna add some essential oils to my client, spirit, so we won't be, you know, looking high and dry at all, but like I said, man, I used the hot towel to dry that skin on it, but now, once the skin is dry, we can take the razor again, then you know, just give that extra crispy white wire that you're looking for. And you can't see it right here, but you can who he is. He has a lighter tone skin, which is cool. But I promise you, see him up close. Man, you cut your hair. That's the effect that you want to get. Now, right here, you know, we just uh, clean the thing on up. Clean it on up. I have to take my details. Once again, I'm not, I wasn't even trying to waste no time with my uh, TI lines. I mean, you know, it just really depends on the hair and the skin. And that determines which clip I'm going to use. Like I said, this is my first time in this client, so now I know what clip I need to clean up with when I'm doing his hair. You feel me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, That side is kicking, you know. Sometimes you got to tell your clients, too. Uh, they be like, man, why this side go more than the other side? Well, shoot, man, you got to stop sleeping on that side all the time. Sometimes you may have to sleep on the back of your head just to let everything go and grow. You feel me? Extra crispy, extra crispy. Look at that, look at that. Bah, bah, bah. Damn. Look at the waves, man. Come on, man. Like I said, man, this is my life. But when you're a barber, you have to be dope. You have to be dope at all times. This is my first time cutting this man's head. And it looks like I didn't cut this man's head. I've been cutting this man's head his whole life, really. <laughs> you feel me? Come on now. You see it. Look at the waves, man. That's the effect that you want. It's just glistening. And that comes from the polishing method, man. Taking that foam wrap, rubbing it through, taking my tear on barber butter, rubbing that through his head, brushing it through. Ah, man, it's beautiful, man. Look at the fade. The blowout is just, it's a gradual effect. But sometimes I surprise myself with the work I do, man. I don't, I'm not trying to sound conceived or copy anything, but sometimes you want to make yourself feel, feel really, really good on the inside. And you, you want your client to feel really good on the inside as well. You gotta make sure, okay, everything is straight, the line is going across, everything is tip top shape. This haircut is till one. Come on, Mike. Why you? Why you at the shop, bro? <laughs> Ain't nobody see you. We live. Yeah, we live, man. Let me get in first for you, real quick. <laughs> Years ago. Years ago. My man tried to play me. Play me. <laughs> YouTube. It's another cut, man. It's your boy Von Keith the Barber. I hope you like it. It's a, you know what I'm saying? A little temp fade, blowout, whatever you want to call it. You've seen the waves. Please go like, comment, and subscribe. Once again, please like, comment, and subscribe. Help the brother out, man. I'm trying to get paid too. Peace.